hike your chi chis up to your chin, lean across that table, and tell your boo you want a steak, okay? Okay. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Kristen Jenna, your favorite Gemini, and I'm back with another video. So, I said in my last makeup video, the green, sultry, smoky one for Valentine's Day, that I was gonna have another look. And that's what we're about to do. So, as you can see, my eyebrows are already done. I have my foundation done. One of the custom time. Definitely one of the custom time because we're gonna talk, sis. We're gonna have a conversation. So, let's get started with the eyeshadow. This is my Jessie's Girl eyeshadow primer. Y'all know the drill. My eyelids are greasy. I'll be over it. So, yeah. I'm gonna start with that. First things first, happy Black History Month. Period. Okay. Y'all been uh, reading up on y'all black history? Y'all been reading y'all black authors and stuff? I have. I am reading like three books by black authors. I'm reading Children of Bl Blood, no. Children of Virtue and Vengeance. I am reading The Nickel Boys. And I am also reading tra Training School for Negro Girls. Those are my picks for this month. And yeah, so that's what I'm reading so far. Trying to, you know, see what's popping in the world of literature. Let's talk TV, y'all. So one of my favorite shows came back, and that is Marriage Boot Camp Hip Hop Edition. Y'all, I'm so excited to see what this, this season is about to hold because one of my faves is on it. And that is Miss Jocelyn Hernandez, baby. The baddest boosh. I am, I'll be the first one to say that I am a Jocelyn Hernandez fan. I love her. She makes for great entertainment, great television. You can't help but watch. Like, you have to watch. So, this season, there is Jocelyn and her man, and she looks great. She done got her, um, she got her Chanel bag from Stevie. She got her computer bag from Stevie, and she got herself a new man. And his name is Ballistic, and they are on this show. And I think they said that they've been together for like two years, which is real cute, which is real cute. And, um, yeah, Jocelyn is out here. She want her ring. She want her marriage. She want her man. She want the wedding. All of that good stuff. And Ballistic is, you know, not really having it. Like, you're not about to put a time frame on me. Which, you know, I understand. Both sides. Um, but we'll get more into that. And then, there's Michelle and Stu. Stu is a younger man and Michelle is just worried like he about to be out here cheating on me I don't want to hold him back it could be somebody younger out here for him yada 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 Stu was like I want you she ain't hearing it she ain't hearing my boy so that's their whole issue she is like by far the prettiest woman I have ever seen in my entire life she is absolutely gorgeous and just like you know when i first saw her i thought like wow if barbie homegirl teresa was a real person she would look like Angela. i really do think that y'all let me know what y'all think because she's absolutely stunning um so their whole issue is that their relationship, their marriage is stale, it's boring. They've been together like 24 years and they've been through some things. So it's just like, she said the shit is fizzling out. So I get that. Cause relationships are work, honey. And if you don't work at them, they will die. <laughs> and then last but not least is Bianca and Chosen. So, 
from my observation, this this couple is the youngest couple, and you can tell because they are very immature. That was evident from the very beginning. Like I remember the first, like after all of the couples got in the first scene, they were like talking about like, why is everyone here? You know, oh shoot, I forgot, I always do this. Last time I recorded this video, I forgot uh, CeeLo Green and his fiance, Shani, Shanae, Shantae, Shani? I don't know the lady name. But anyway, that's the last couple. And it was hard to tell what their main issue was. They were like, I don't know. She was saying like consistency is an issue. And then CeeLo Green being the free spirit that he is, is just like, don't put me in a box. And I'm like, all right, bro, I get it. You're an artist. Can't hold an artist down. But at the same time, homie, like, get it together. Number one, I didn't even know the man was engaged, y'all. You can tell I don't keep up with nothing in social media or barely anyone in social media because I didn't know the man was engaged. No cap, the last time I saw CeeLo Green on TV, it was his daughter Sierra, Super Sweet 16. That was the last time I saw him on the television. Like, after that, their main thing, <clears throat> a lot of the other couples in the, in the house were talking about how they were like thinking everything was all good in the hood with the two of them because you know they're not really out here in the media when well, nothing like posting on shade room about them so um yeah so i think one of the main first activities that they did was the um i'm finna look in that ain't no mirror in it was the um award show so each couple got an award that fit their their main issue what they were in the house trying to work on styles p and his wife got the unlit award <laughs> and yeah that was because like i said their relationship was stale um according to them that their relationship was stale, want nothing popping, want nothing happening. So like, they got that award. Bianca and Chosen, they got two turned up. So when they went up to accept their award, right? It had came out that Bianca took a $200 Uber ride to go punch this girl in the face. She said that she had seen, I'm guessing like had seen on social media that he was like out here with somebody or he had left some venue walking out with another woman. So what does she do? She hops into an Uber to go to wherever he is, pay the Uber driver $200 to get there to fight the female. So my thing is, for one, $200 for a ride is a no-go. It will always be a no-go. That's way too expensive. Where was she going? China? And then when you get there, you initiate a fight with the female? One thing about me, I ain't fighting no bird. Period. Period. Over my end, no. There's nothing for us to argue about. There's nothing for us to talk about. The person that owes you an explanation is your significant other. I would never. I like, <laughs> that's one thing I never understood about when it came to females in relationships. Your man cheating on you. He puts you in this predicament and showing you that he is unfaithful. And you going after the female? There are so many things in this situation that you need to rethink. Like, not just her, but 
if you been that girl, don't do that shit no more. <laughs> so next, what I'm about to do, I just use my Makeup Revolution palette and the Style Reloaded Neutrals 2, which is like this pink palette. Now I'm about to use my ColourPop Super Shock Shadow, say that three times fast, in the color Brady, which is like this dusty rose mauve color. And I'm gonna just put that on my leg. Did I mention this was a, a soft glam look? Probably should have mentioned that. So yeah, I'm doing a soft glam look, or I'm trying to, because this might not turn out all that well. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just taking that with my finger and just going in. As the conversation was happening while they were accepting their award, it was coming out that she has put hands on him as well. And that's not healthy. <laughs> so that kind of explains why they got the two turned up title, which is not cool. So moving on, Michelle and Stu, they got the FOMO award. So they are missing out. Michelle feels like he's gonna, he's missing out like on a younger woman because she is older. She's been out here in these streets for a little bit. We get it, sis. That woman has been through a lot when it comes to relationships with men. Y'all watched her, um, what is it called? Her, like, <laughs> what is it called? Her Lifetime movie. Um, her life story and her relationships with Dr. Dre and Suge Knight. Suge Knight all around scary ass individual. I don't know why anyone would ever like I don't understand it. Maybe to somebody he's fine but that nigga look like a Disney villain and I'm not here for it. Like no. That's not it. She you know has been in a relationship with the two of them has children by them yeah, I just, you know, want the best for that woman. I sincerely hope, like, that she has done the work after getting out of those two relationships that she has gone to therapy and all of that. Because I really, after seeing what I saw, her, her story, like, ma'am, ma'am. What she went through was not okay. Nobody should ever go through that. Like, I don't care how famous you are, sir. Mm -mm, no, no. So going back to their award, he just feels like he is missing out and there are younger women out here and that he should just, you know, try to find a younger woman to be with, et cetera, et cetera. And he's like, I want you. But while he was up there, he was like being very immature. Um, Cause Judge Toller, another one of my faves from Divorce Court. She's early on in the season, like day one, she comes out and yeah. She, you know, checks him a little bit can't remember what she was like exact exactly what she was saying um more along the lines of like you know if this man is saying that he wants you he wants you and why is it an argument or confusion or any you know of that sort so I guess she was pre pre preaching to the choir I can't talk and he just you know just felt so moved to put his little microphone award in her face and she was like you need to tighten up because I'm getting to you next and yeah all right so who I really want to talk about is Jocelyn and Ballistic right they got the ride or die award cool so as I mentioned before their, their main issue is Jocelyn wants to run she wants to get married And she wants her ring before they leave, which is crazy. Cause y'all only finna be there for a week and a half. You need to relax. So like, their story really resonated with me because I understand where the two of them are coming from. Both sides of the story. 
I'm engaged now and I've been engaged for <laughs> I have to think about it. Two years? Well, not two years. Two years. And there was a time, just like Jocelyn, where I was like fiending for this ring. I wanted it oh so desperately. Before our engagement, we had been together. Why is my under eye burning? That is not okay. Before we got engaged, we had been together. What, like. he's gonna watch this and correct me i don't <laughs> i don't math okay and at that point in our relationship that that entire year i had seen several of my friends get engaged and my little feelings was hurt <laughs> So when it comes to Jocelyn, like I understand why she feels this pressure. It's also societal pressures as well. Like society tells you, you're, you're not a worthy woman if you're not married. That has to be the goal, the end goal. If you are a female, you have to get married. You have to have a husband, the kids, all of that good stuff. That's what they talk about. And that's what's ex expected. So, going back into, like, my story and why I get it. It's like, I felt as though it wasn't ever going to happen for me. And that same year, like, I kid you not, it happened, like, consecutively. That same year, it was, like, December going in, December 2017 going into 2000 and, no. December 2018 going into December 2019. January 2019. Oh my gosh. Y'all know what I mean. And I had just finished reading this book called The Engagement Game. And if you have read it before or know what it's about, it's basically about the same situation, the same type of scenario. And basically this woman has been in a long-term relationship with her boyfriend and she wants her damn ring and i was like yeah sis i want my ring too like where's my ring everybody else is getting engaged we've been together x amount of time like same sentiment that jo jocelyn has so i had had conversations with my fiance and we talked about it and it was just like you know our time is coming you can't rush these things and you know i sat there i listened to him i ate it like all right you're right can't rush these things x y and z i got it i understood so i let it go new year's that's when he proposed like so i finished that book the end of the year before in the top of the year like the very first day of 2019 he asked me to marry him so with that being said i get how jocelyn feels i completely understand it and kind of going back into that book as well touching back on that like basically she was just saying how she ruined like a pretty good relationship that she had because she wanted that ring. I do recommend, like, ladies, if you're in a relationship and you're looking for your ring, I do recommend that book. Um, also, it was written by a black woman as well. So I definitely read that book and I let it go. And as soon as I let it go, it happened for me. Going back into Jocelyn and the whole show, I feel like I really feel this man ain't ballistic. I feel like it's going to happen she is just forcing it and i don't think that's healthy because you might essentially push this man away on the other side of things i get it as well because this honestly might be the end goal altogether but she doesn't know that she's trying to rush it but at the same time like 
we've already been together two years and I want this you want this you say you want this so show me like let's let's get it popping and from what I observed like that whole scene like he's a stand-up guy oh also like he's smooth like slick checked her too <laughs> And I think Jocelyn needs that. Giving her history and like watching her relationship play out on national television. Jocelyn is a spitfire. Okay. She talks her shit. She says what she says. And she'll tell you she said it and don't care. And she'll say it to your face. But in her relationships with Stevie in particular, like name calling, aggression, violence. We all saw her. Molly watched Stevie J upside his head in that therapist's office. We all saw it. So we know what Jocelyn is used to, who she is. And I feel like the man that she's with now, that's not going to cut it. She got to make some changes and let that, let that go because that's not going to work. So I just set my under eye with my Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder in the color 35 Deep. So now we're going to get into contour. And he was explaining to the judge and Dr. Ish, like, I take care of the two of them. I make sure that the two of them are straight before I even do or take care of what I need to take care of. I'm using the Revolution uh, Patricia Bright Face Palette in the style You Are Gold. I found this at Ulta. Love her. She comes with a blush, a bronze, and a highlight color so i'm gonna use the whole trio because i've used it before and it's bomb love her mean it hold on wait before i do that let me set my face because i'm tripping this guy i need some new birth look the ghetto i can't So yeah, that's like one of the main shows. I think what I might do for y'all, honestly. Ooh, look at that line. That is embarrassing. <laughs> ah, we're gonna fix it. We're gonna fix it. We're gonna fix it. What I think I might continue to do is review the series as the month continues. Because like I said, it's Black History Month. And one thing that I'm definitely obsessed with is Black Love. So, I think, what am I doing? This is not even the... <sighs> and to the middle section. And we're going to bronze my leg. Oh, ah, my leg. So, I can lay a little bit smoother, you know? So, yeah. I think I covered everything for the most part in the with the television show nothing too crazy happened because like after all it's the first episode but I feel like it's gonna get crazy because if you're familiar with the show at all it escalates quickly <laughs> even though it is reality tv you can get something from it they do real activities and they have like hard difficult conversations and when he and I would watch it together we definitely had very good conversations it was like it was almost like marriage counseling for us like because a, a topic or something would come up or an issue would come up in one of the couple's relationships and he and I would sit there and like pick it apart so I just did my bronzing and now I'm, I'm about to do my blush. So going back into that same palette. This pink is so pretty. So effing pretty. So I'm going to take that. Excuse me. Ooh. On a fluffy brush and get my cheeks. Real quick. So let's finish off these ads. And I'll be back with the final look. <laughs> uh, blended out my bottom lash line. I will have all of the products that I use 
written down and linked down in the description box below. So yeah, y'all, what y'all think? I definitely tried to go for like a soft glam look. I don't know, I feel like I did a good job. I feel like this is very light and pretty. Um, yeah, not too much highlight on the cheek, but it's a little sheen there. Cause you know, soft glam is supposed to be matte and very pretty. Um, so yeah, let me know what y'all think. If you tried this look or tried this look or have any tips or tricks, let me know in the comment section below. Interact with me bond with me you know how you know how i do don't forget to like to comment and if you haven't already subscribe and most definitely if you feeling this look share it okay put it on your socials like let and let your people know um uh, my friend Kristen, she um she crushed this look like he got her video yes do like just like that it's easy simple nothing to all right y'all so i will see you in the next one and yeah i hope you'll come back because i'll be here where else am i gonna go <laughs> all right y'all bye